Inspiring Time. I am Amber Card, and joining me today is a sweet friend, though we have never met in person. We have known each other, gosh, now for two years, thereabouts, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but we met actually in a in a direct sales company. And I love that about a direct sales company. I know there's mixed feelings across the board, um, what you get there, but really what we have found as female entrepreneurs is that there is a network and a connection for almost everything. And so today, Jessica Jones is going to share with us her struggles and her triumphs and her successes and everything in between. So about two weeks ago, um, we shared right here a beautiful story about cancer and survival. And, you know, the hard, messy part in the, like, right after you find out and making it through. But today is not about that. Today is about hope, triumph, celebrating life, and that's what we're going to talk about. So, Jessica, I'm going to let you take it away um, and just... Share with us what you want to about the beginning part, but what I really want us to look at is the fun part after. Okay, then I will share because goodness gracious, I love sharing this part. Okay, number one, it is today, which is so amazing that you have me talking about this today, that um, marks 11 years that I am a survivor. So, so cancer free for 11 years today, so I'm over the top happy, excited today. So I will be celebrating all day today. All day. Um, <laughs> first by sharing with you guys. So um, grade three um, inductive carcinoma is what I had, which is just a fancy word for very, very aggressive cancer. So it's just a very fast cancer. If they didn't catch it in time or treat me with chemotherapy, um, it wouldn't have been the same outcome um, because it was so fast growing. But I did, I went through um, a year and a half of chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. So um, I know that you said two weeks ago that you talked to- Mindy. Mindy, yes, I love Mindy too, um, just about what she went through. And I think honestly, most people that are told that they have cancer, most of them go through the same thing. Um, most of them that go through the same treatment, they go through the same thing. It's hard. It's emotional. You cry and then you feel guilty for crying because you should be happy that you're alive. Um, so it's an emotional roller coaster. You're exhausted. Um, so I think that everybody that has been told that they have cancer probably go through that same thing, which I did too. So I can get on here and say, oh my goodness, I'm so grateful I went through this. I'm so happy now. But honestly, if you looked back on my life at that time, I was a mess. It was hard. Um, it, I was in pain. I was exhausted. Um, uh, oh, I didn't have any hair. And then I was really sad about not having hair and then feeling guilty about be being sad about not having hair because I should be happy that I'm alive. So <laughs> there's the first part of it. It was not all roses back then. It really was. I can't just say, oh my goodness, I'm so happy I had cancer because <laughs> at that time I wasn't. And if somebody would have told me while I was going through the trenches that you should be grateful or you're going to be happy one day or something, I probably would have been mad at them. <laughs> I think they should probably have walked away slowly, still facing you. So you didn't throw something at them probably. <laughs> Exactly. So I don't want to come across to everybody that when you're going through that, it should be all roses and you should be happy and not sad because that is not, that was not reality for me. And most people that have cancer is not the reality either. But oh, what are you going to say? Well, I was just going to ask, okay, so you, were you married at that point? Oh, I'm glad you asked because that was a significant part. So I had only been married for five months. Wow. So, <laughs> yes, so I went from Victoria's Secret to Honey Pass Me That Bucket. <laughs> so, 
Yes, but um, my husband, he was amazing during everything from my temper tantrums that I had because I was upset, from me being sad, from me looking like an alien. He told me I was beautiful every day. So that was, that was, that was actually a big help. Okay. So um, men, if you're listening today, ver- I think verbalizing how beautiful and how special and all those attributes of your significant other is very important during this time for sure. It is so important. Yes. Because your mental state, when you look in the mirror and you are bald, it's, it's very nice to have your husband say that you're still beautiful, even if you don't think so. Now you also, not only were you just married, but you also have another special person in your life. And I think she's probably your twin sister. Oh yes, my twin sister, um, Holly. So does she, how did, you know, I've always heard that twins um, have a, a very tight bond and I'm sure that's probably very true between you two. Does she actually live there close to you? No, so Holly lives in Gaffney, South Carolina. That is about three hours away from me. And as soon as she heard, she had just had a newborn. She just had a baby. It's so funny when I see him, he's this big. I'm like, that's as old as my cancer would have been, that big. (laughs) But uh, she had just had a newborn and um, she started sending me makeup. That's a huge thing too, makeup. It sounds crazy, but sending someone lip gloss uh, when they're going through chemo, it just, it just, it's nice. But she started sending me all these gifts in the mail, just like brightening my day. She finally was able to come to see me, but at that time she had just had a newborn. So, so needless to say, your support system was pretty massive. And I'm sure that friends, um, from, from college and then early young married life, they were on board. I had a huge support system, which made a huge difference in my emotional roller coaster. So, okay, did you did you get to ring a bell? I mean, I always see that there's a bell to ring. I'm not even gonna lie. When I see bells on Facebook, I get a little jealous. I didn't get to ring a bell. <laughs> Darn it! I should have had a bell. To Where ring. is my bell? <laughs> I mean, that's funny you brought that up. I'm gonna get me a bell. I'm gonna ring it daily. <laughs> And here's my bell. Like, where's my bell? No, I did not ring a bell, but I do. But it it is a sense of something huge that you just accomplished and got over in such a huge amount of your time. Just to ring the bell to say that you're finished. I'm sure that feels amazing. So how long were you literally in the trenches? So you found out about five months in, after being married. And then how long was the treatment period? So I had chemo for about a year and a half. Um, radiation for for just, I think, six weeks. Um, and I continued on one, but I think all in all, it was about two years, a year and a half, two years. Um, but I can't say the whole entire two years I was in the trenches because there's one chemo that is awful. And that's the one where you lose your hair. I think when, um, I, that was the worst when I was sick. But I really think when finally I saw an inch of my hair come back, I think like my confidence went up. I started feeling a little bit better. I even got a ruler to start measuring my hair. So it wasn't always in the trenches. I felt myself start getting back to me, start stop feeling sorry about myself and start thinking about other people probably at about a year in. And when I started thinking about other people, I think that's really, really what took me out of the trenches, out. So you, you've rung the imaginary bell. You are free and clear. Mm-hmm. And now this whole new journey, I, can, I can't even imagine, like getting married in itself is a journey. <laughs> And you, you know, I am sure you'd already been planning the perfect house, the perfect future, the perfect goals. And then all of a sudden you're hit with this news and now you have to pivot. And this pivot led to trauma and anxiety and emotions that you didn't know were coming. 
but there was a beauty to that. You learned, I can only imagine, um, so much more about yourself and how strong you truly are. And now it's time to start again. And that's what I really <laughs> want us to talk about today because what does that, what did that take? I mean, it's time. It's, it's time. <laughs> it's time. So, so what was your first like, this is happening. We're, we're living life. It's so funny that you even asked that question because it, there is a specific, specific time that I do remember that. And I remember being in the shower and I, I don't know, I, I, I was getting better. Like I didn't feel as bad. I was about to get dressed. I was about to go out and I'm like just sad because I'm like, when I get out of the shower, I'm not going to be able to fix my hair. It's not going to look pretty. I'm going out. I'm like, okay, Jessica, what are you doing? Like you, like the doctor at that time had just did surgery and taken out all the, all the cancer. Okay. So I knew I did not have cancer. He took it out. Obviously I was still on chemotherapy. I was feeling bad. But at that point, right when I'm, I said, do stop feeling sorry for yourself, you stop feeling sorry for yourself. Right. When I told myself that and changed my entire mindset and said, you're not going to cry today. You're going to get up and go do something for somebody else. And, and I did, I started doing, I started doing missionary work. I started volunteering at so many places around here in Mount Pleasant. That is the turning point in, in, in me feeling good. Okay, Jessica, you're not this sorry little girl that is tainted by cancer. You are a badass. You get out there and you change the way people think because you can do that. You change the way people think. I mean, people feel because you can do that. But I can't do that if I'm sitting there crying, thinking about myself. That was the turning point. I love that. Inspiring time is truly about helping others find the beauty in themselves by hearing other stories and triumphs and its successes. And that is exactly what you chose to do. You chose to serve by sh probably sharing part of your story with others, um, though not in full, I'm sure. But in passing, your gratitude and your outlook on life had tremendously changed. You were ready to help others not feel sorry for themselves in whatever moment they were in. Uh, it's hard yeah. when you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and know it is. that it's a new journey. So, so you're help, you're doing missionary work. You're, you're volunteering. Um, you are a pharmacist. Yeah. So was that, was that college or did you finish that training after, um, Emo was done. Okay. So I was already a pharmacist when I was going through this. Um, and I just continued to work. That make it better or worse knowing a lot. I know that Mindy was like, I felt comforted by the fact doctors knew, you know, I kind of knew what they were saying to me. unlike the average Joe who's not in the medical world. So was it <laughs> helpful or was it a little more scary knowing, um, what certain medicines could do? I, <laughs> I, this is what I think about that. The brain is so powerful. The brain is so powerful. And because I had an extensive class in chemotherapy and I knew exactly what was going to do to me, I swear I got it five times. I literally got it five times fold the side effects. And I swear it's because <laughs> my brain <laughs> tricked me. And I did go down to 98 pounds because I could not stop being sick. So I think for me, it was worse, but, um, for me, it was worse, but working, um, during that time, I'm glad I did it because it did make the time pass, but I'm not going to tell you and sit here and make it sound all glorious and say, yeah, I worked because I wanted to, um, I worked because, you know, I was a badass. I, I was, I was exhausted. I was sick. I wished I was at home and, um, and I was mad that I had to work. Um, but, but I, but I continued because I had a great job and I did love it. I did need the insurance, obviously. Um, and I just wanted to keep that job, which I probably would have, but, um, it, it was hard. I did keep a smile on my face. I did. And I'm glad looking back on it that I did continue to work because it did make the time go fast. So 
there. I can't imagine a time without you having a smile on your face. Every <laughs> time we have ever talked, I can just hear a smile in your voice. So I would have to say that I would have to call your bluff if I <laughs> said you didn't have a smile on your face. I try. It's way better being happy than not being happy. Way better, way easier. <laughs> So that was part of your support group. So we know you have, your husband was amazing. I'm sure your parents were amazing. Um, but were there other areas? I, I guess the, the question would be, you're almost networking at this point. Like you've gone through a traumatic experience and I've heard that um, you lean in to a different group. So were there groups that you leaned into or did it look different? Did your support needs look different? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, so those that were supporting me, my friends, my immediate network, it felt good to have somebody and I needed that too. And it felt really good to have that help. I had friends um, sending me blankets, which was amazing because I would get cold in the chemo room. I had friends washing my hair for me and family, um, bringing me meal after meal. It, I was very grateful for that. It was so helpful. But then again, there's this part where healthy and they feel good um so they don't get it i remember people calling and saying how's jessica and jason would say well she's throwing up and they would say why <laughs> and i would just be on the side like <laughs> because i'm on chemo i'm sick you know what i mean so they it's hard for people that don't go through it to understand and um and i'm very grateful that they did all that but it did um force me or I don't know if I should use that word. It did lead me to a different group of others that were going through the same thing that I did um, so that they would understand and that so we could relate to each other and talk to each other. And when I said I was sick, they wouldn't ask why. The dreaded WebMD by most medical professionals. Um, don't do it. <laughs> don't. don't do that. Don't do that. But you were able to hear real time what was important and yeah start making your educated connections yes like what to do when radiation like some people some doctors forget because they're so busy in healthcare to tell you to apply lotion and do not forget to take it off before you get your next radiation I'm so grateful someone told me about that um just little bitty things that you know that really helped me in my treatment networking so years after that y'all got to have you were blessed with being able to have children, right? Yes, yes, yes. So how, how many years? Hold on. Six years? Yes. <laughs> yes. Counting this up. Yeah, counting this. Why am I asking you? Like, I should know this. <laughs> no, I still, don't. I still can't remember Emma Catherine's year that she was born. <laughs> yes, and that... That was huge. I think for the longest, longest time, even though they told me I didn't have any cancer remaining, even though my hair had come back, I still had that longing and thinking, what if I cannot have babies? Like I was getting older and older every single year. I remember just praying every single second I got alone. Every single time I remembered praying because I wanted babies so badly um and then um what was it that just like six years yes. six years later so i was diagnosed with cancer when i was 32. am i doing this right <laughs> maybe i don't think i'm doing this right i i was 37 when i had the twins yeah 32. twins yes yeah, twins and it's incredibly blessed like i'm not even gonna lie i We'll thank God every single day for those babies. And I will smile when I say I have twins. I feel well, grateful. To follow Jessica on Facebook or on social media in general, the girls look exactly like her. I'm not, not her husband. I'm sure there's charming <laughs> personality similarities, but they're like her little mini me's and they do these sweet live videos and <laughs> it's just this exuberant energy. So if you ever need a pick me up, that's the videos you want to watch <laughs> right there. They're a lot of fun. I, I really think I'm a completely different mom now than what I would have been if I um, didn't go through all of that and then 
and then not and think that I wouldn't be able to have kids like because I am grateful every day every single second grateful and I don't take that for for, for granted ever and so you don't have to answer this if you don't want but were did you have any fertility treatments or were they completely natural they were natural wow the power <laughs> of prayer the power of prayer I remember asking five friends to pray for me, five friends that I knew would pray for me and wouldn't just say, okay, I'll pray for you and not pray for me. And that's what I love about prayer, because however you look at that meditative time, um, whether it just the positive energy itself being put out into the world over a certain um, focused subject seems to be, if you can find the positivity, and the power to focus on it, it just seems to happen so much more easily. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But good positive energy can never hurt anything. Ever. Ever. <laughs> so these two bouncing girls came into the world. I'm sure they were screaming and having a blast when <laughs> they came out. <laughs> Already partying. Already partying. And so what does that look like? So you're, you're, a survivor, you have a wonderful marriage, you have two adorable kiddos. It's not just the success of surviving, it's the success of staying positive, uplifting others, raising two kids that are, um, they know how strong their mom is. I don't know how much they know of your story prior yet, probably not a ton. Um, but how does that feel? I mean, it's just, it's, inc it's, it's incredible for me to think about how much you have poured into this, into this moment and where you stand in the way of careers, because there are two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, mean I, I honestly, I do feel stronger. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, especially during COVID, everybody gets down. Everybody almost gets down during COVID, but it is easier to pick up when I think, oh, I want to do this or oh, I want to do that. Or it is so much easier to think, Jessica, you're a survivor. You ha you're a mom of twins. You're a badass. You get out there and you go change the world because you can. Um, it is easier for me to be able to pick myself up or to tear myself up because I know for a fact that I can go out and do whatever I want because I am a whole lot stronger. And I'll tell you this, it is a lot easier to tear someone else up and make someone else happy when you're happy. So I make sure that I am because I want to do, be able to do that because, because I know what I, what I went through when I was so down with chemo and sad and felt ugly i know how bad that is and i know for a fact that i can go and help that person and it's way easier to help someone than whenever you're happier so i do try my best to stay as happy as i can so that i'm available for someone else for sure because someone else has been there for me too in the past several i don't think um this was a, a convention that you would have been at i think it was before prior to you getting into the, to the direct sales company that we're in. Keynote speaker says, when you are a vase that is, and of course that resonates with me in floral design. A vase. <laughs> when you are a vase that is half full, you're constantly sloshing what's left of your energy over people. So if you continue to be like a spigot that is pouring into yourself, you don't even, you're not sloshing. You're not pushing a lot of energy to slosh yourself over other people. You're overflowing. And that is exactly what I think of when I think of energy and positivity. It is Jessica Jones right there. That woman, she is a base that runneth over. Thank you. And everybody she pours into and on top of, they blossom, they grow they they it's it's pretty incredible to watch you're sweet thank you <laughs>
What else? You know, okay, let's talk about that just a second because we know I love me some self care and gratitude. <laughs> and I loved what you said right there. So, would you offer up any activity? I love the fact that you just said, you know, you listed out the things that really brought you joy. Is there is there something you like to journal about, or is there an activity that you do to find that positivity? Um. I don't journal. It's so funny that you say that because don't journal. <laughs> I'm always when I do any type of training, I skip the um, what's it called? Oh, oh, self care, self love. I skip that part. Like what? I got this. I skip it. I'm like, I, I got this. I am going to go something else to learn how to like do this part instead. So you're <laughs> mind. You're you're seriously a mind over matter girl. I like, am your mind to okay that's really good to know because that might be something that somebody else does too um you will it to happen and you're so strong in your mind no no i need all the help i can get <laughs> <laughs> i do skip over the self-care but i do make sure i think this i think so what i do what I do is I, if I get sad, I know this, if I get sad and I plan on helping someone else and if there's no one around me, then just going online to volunteer someone, I know I immediately get better immediately. So that's one of the things I do for self-care because that helps me helping other people. And I know that that sounds crazy and don't roll your eyes. You've got to try it because if somebody would have told me that before, um, all the, the tragedy, I would have been like, oh God, you goody goody. But, but it's so true. It's so true. And when I started doing so much of it, it does change your life. It does make you a happier person when you're making somebody else happy. It's an endorphin. It's actually part of, um, I've just been reading these amazing books <laughs> lately about neuroscience and you know, we're, um, personally, we're probably getting ready to move again. Um, and so every time we pick up and move the kids, I never want them to feel like they've been left behind, you know, like it's always leaving. Um, so I've been doing a little bit more kid therapy research, you know, just to make sure that I'm, we talk about everything. We try and write things down. I have one who's super, um, the girl is super creative and dry and the, and the little boy is very, buildy um he loves legos and minecraft and you know so they're two totally different personalities and a boy and a girl um so just want to make sure that i'm on track which is why i find this fascinating because to me sitting down and jotting down gratitudes um and and writing it out helps me solidify but then like you said it's a mind over matter thing like <laughs> just that's what you want. And then you figure out, then you almost reverse, reverse, reverse it and go. Yes. And then I'll figure out how to do it. Yes. yes. That's gosh, that's yeah. really, that's interesting. And it's funny how different people are. Well, and that's what I love about these podcasts is that that's the beauty for me is finding out how, that's how I grow my garden. I know that's, that's, crazy but it is I love all the different personalities all the different colors and textures and watching my garden grow with new and unique personalities and that's just that's my happy spot so uh, I just had a mental picture of your garden <laughs> garden but it's mine <laughs> <laughs> no, no English um beautifully structured here I'm a wild wild flower garden all the way <laughs> This is the best way to have it. Scattered to the wind. Well, I think the last thing that I really just want to talk about is that you started off. It was, it was brutal. And you pushed through. And all these beautiful things have been happening. And now, not only do you do pharmacy work, which looks a little bit different now, I think, um, with COVID and kids at home, but you also are leading by example, a fantastic group of women who are growing quickly in this direct sales um, group as well. What would you say? I know I said it earlier, direct sales gives some people a bad taste in their mouth, but um, 
what would you say about direct sales and being with these really power driven women? Um, it's genius. Direct sales is the most genius thing that I have ever been in. And I didn't think so at first. And I was one that rolled my eyes because I was not educated on it. I thought I was too good for it. And now I'm like, it is way too good for me. Um, but I, I think it's so genius because obviously the, the paychecks, they just start rolling. It's like a snowball. So not only that, but the, the, the friends that you meet. And, and you know, it's so funny that you say that. It's because when I first started seeing people talk about direct sales, they would talk about the friends that you meet. I'm like, I, I don't do want any friends. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any other friends. I don't need any other friends. I just want the money. So how much money do you make? And so, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> I didn't care and I didn't care for a little bit into my business when I first started like I just I liked the paychecks mm -hmm. but then I met the friends then I bonded with them and now I get it I get why they say that's the most important part because of uh, because my most important part was money but now I get it I used to think that they said friends are the most important part because they weren't making good money but <laughs> and that's that, what I thought that could be true too <laughs> But now what I see is there's friendships are more than any money that you can ever make ever. Those friendships, um, you meet uh, like-minded people. Um, and then it's just so much fun. It's so much fun to work with them and it just really enriches your life. Um, so if you ask me about direct sales, it's genius. Well, it is, it is hard work. Um, you are basically selling yourself, which when you overfloweth, it's not um, as, as much of a challenge. It is still a challenge, but it is not as much of a challenge. So I'm glad that you said that because it really, um, I think any connection you can make in life is important and valuable. And you just never know when that connection will help you connect again. So it's yeah. like little... Lincoln Logs, Legos, all the way through life. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Like our relationship, our friendship. You know, it's, we just, I swear we've only really communicated over Facebook Messenger and like little voice clips and, you know, <laughs> back and forth. But it's a friendship that you know that's there. Um, if I have information for you, you're going to pop on and say, hey, what was that thing? Um, and it's, it's invaluable. It's priceless. That's so true. It is. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I don't think we've stopped laughing or smiling the entire time. And I just hope that when people <laughs> this jump off fun. here, they, they have something to take with them. They find some beauty that they didn't know was there and they can connect a little bit easier. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me and talking to me. I love sharing my day with you. So thank you for letting me talk about it today. All right, guys. So t t this week, we're going to call it this week, is Jessica's 11-year cancer-free. And on the blog, I have um, this amazing drink recipe card. It is her favorite drink. Um, it is a tasty, salty margarita. So we would love for you, we're going to do it after we get, jump off, but we would love for you to cheers a healthy, happy 2021 with us and to all your successes and survival. Thank you. All right, girl, we'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye.